The diesel truck market has long been a loud and proud group of folks. From the very first diesel way back in the 1890s, diesel engines have been some of the most reliable, dependable, and fuel efficient engines ever produced. But it hasn't been all bald eagles, burnouts, and freedom for these compression fired beauties. Modern emissions have forced diesel engines to trend towards cleaner, safer, and less impactful emissions over the last few years. But what the heck is DEF anyway? What the hell is an SCR and why are we seeing the EPA in all sorts of press releases in the last 12 months? I'm Dustin with Custom Offsets. You guys can find me at Dusty.co on the old Instagram. And today we're jumping down the rabbit hole to bring you guys exactly what is DEF and how to modern diesel emission systems really work. Let's do it. Now, before we get into that, I want to preface this one by saying that there are a lot of acronyms when it comes to diesel exhaust systems, DEF or DEF as some folks call it, SCR, EGR, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. And as we go through all this together, I'm gonna do my very best here to make sure I explain everything to you guys, but I'm gonna need you to keep up because it might be a little bit of a bumpy ride. It's like when you fly into Chicago, the pilot comes on and he says, listen, we're gonna experience some turbulence. It's just the way it is. So chapter one of this history book really starts way back in 1970. The 70s really were a great time, by the way. Gas was 36 cents a gallon back then. Your average home cost just $23,000, and MASH is debuting on the TV for the first time. Oh, MASH. Listen, I remember being a young kid watching MASH with my dad on his lunch break before he would head back to work on the farm. Good times. Well, a lot happened in the 70s, including a lot of drugs. One super notable bit was the founding of the Environmental Protection Agency. This Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA for short, was founded on December 2nd of 1970 with the primary purpose of keeping our rivers, oceans, air, and natural areas clean and free of any pollution, debris, or trash in the case of some of those natural areas like state parks and such. Over the last 50 years, the EPA has began to tighten regulations on emissions of all kinds of vehicles, but for the purpose of today's video, we're gonna specifically talk about diesel engines exclusively. All was fair in love and war until 2008 when the good old EPA decided it wanted to flex out like a Jeep owner at a show truck meet and crack down mandating that all auto manufacturers begin adding diesel particulate filters or DPFs to their three quarter ton and larger diesel pickups. But Dustin, what is a DPF really? Like what does it do? How does it work? I'm glad you asked. A DPF or diesel particulate filter is an emissions related device that is installed into the exhaust system of the truck and catches particulate matter in the exhaust stream. Now I know that that sounds all fancy and big words and stuff, but what it really means is that a DPF is basically this big metal tube similar to a muffler. Inside of this big metal tube, there's a series of mesh screens. Now these screens act as a strainer and basically catch any unburned fuel or carbon particles that may be flowing out of the engine and into the atmosphere. Think of it as like a big strainer on a pot of spaghetti, except the water is your truck's exhaust fumes and the noodles are these tiny little pieces of soot. It's actually a really simple system. To keep this diesel particulate filter clean, they go through a process called regeneration. Again, I get it. Regeneration sounds like this big fancy word and complex and stuff, but it's actually really simple. When a DPF goes through regeneration, the computer that controls the engine will cause the engine to warm up enough that the exhaust gases also get warm because that's what happens in a diesel. This increase in exhaust gas temperatures actually causes the unburnt fuel particles in the DPF to combust, burning them off and then cleaning them out of the filter so then the filter's clean. Pretty simple. All this is great and all, but how does this mysterious blue liquid depth stuff come into play? In 2010, just a few short years after the EPA mandated particulate filters, they also introduced DEF, DEF, diesel exhaust fluid, DEF blue, many others. They're all the same name for the same thing. Diesel exhaust fluid or DEF is a mixture of just two ingredients, water and urea. See, DEF is critical for a diesel emissions technology called SCR or selective catalyst reduction. Here's how it actually works. As a diesel engine runs, it produces hot exhaust gases. As the exhaust gases are pushed out of the engine through the standard suck, squeeze, bang, blow of a four cycle engine, these gases flow through the exhaust tubes, right? That's what happens. Cylinder comes up, pushes it out, psh, out the exhaust tubes it goes. Just before entering the catalytic converter, the mixture of urea and water, otherwise known as DEF, is sprayed into the exhaust. 
This injection of additional nitrogen causes a chemical reaction to take place inside of the catalytic converter, ultimately reducing the amount of nitrous oxide, or NOx, NOx, that is pushed out of the tailpipe. All in all, it's actually a pretty simple process, and it certainly does help reduce emissions out of modern diesel trucks. But it's not all rainbows and unicorns like the EPA likes to tell you. While they're certainly not as common as it once was, there were several reported issues with early emission systems. Many early diesel emission systems were plagued with all sorts of issues. And when we say plagued, we mean plagued. It's bad. Do a quick Google search or scroll through some of the forums and you'll find dozens and dozens of accounts of guys having one or another issue. Common themes here seem to be issues with particulate filters plugging up, causing the truck to go into limp mode, or in some cases not move at all and requiring a service technician to come out and connect to the truck with their computer and force it to basically regenerate. Other concerns include issues with the pumps of the DEF tanks where if you're in a cold weather scenario like we are up here, it would cause the urea water mixture to crystallize and thicken up. Starving pumps causing the entire DEF system to just work improperly or not work at all. In some extreme cases, we've even heard of entire DEF tanks freezing solid, taking much longer to thaw than the diesel tank did if it's really that cold, which causes lost time. And if you're, say, a hotshot trucker, for example, or a guy who uses his truck daily for his business, it also means lost money. In addition to the struggles of the diesel exhaust systems, one of the biggest challenges we've seen to the diesel trucks of today is the notable impact to both performance and that sweet, sweet exhaust sound that modern day emission systems have caused. Ask anyone around and they'll tell you that the days of hearing the sweet sound of a straight pipe turbo diesel V8 screaming down the road, they're gone. Instead, modern trucks of today sound significantly less like trucks and quite a bit more like cars, which... <sighs> It's a real bummer, honestly. Not only does this increased restriction in the exhaust system make the truck sound way less cool, it also causes exhaust gas temperatures to run warmer than they would with all that emission stuff in there. This can be a major issue if you're towing or hauling heavy loads, especially for those of you who are in states like Tennessee where you literally climb up and down a mountain just to go to work and back. But it's not all bad news with diesel emission systems. Though the EPA certainly made the diesel performance game a little bit more tricky in the last few years, it is still possible to get some goodies out of your diesel truck if that's what you're into. There are a small handful of companies that are making parts for your post emissions clad diesel truck, but probably the most notable of all of those companies is Banks Engineering. See, Banks Engineering makes all sorts of products from intakes to exhaust, gauges to tunes and so much more right here in the good old USA, right over in California, actually. Ryan and I were actually able to tour the facility a few weeks ago when we were there in California, and it was super cool to see. When they say that they make all of it in-house, they're not kidding. They have a whole machine shop and tube benders and welders and stuff. It's pretty cool. Best part is that every one of their products gets a CARB EO number, meaning that even if you are in the very, very strict state of California, you can still get some performance goodies for your truck. What do you guys think about all the emissions regulations? Have you had any experience with a diesel emission system? Let us know down in the comments section below. And as always, if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. With that, I'm Dustin with Custom Offsets. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.